forward Dorian James gets the first two for the Ospreys. And for Austin P, their lineup tonight, no changes from what they've been going with with uh, Javante Black, Des White, Desi Jones, Isaac Haney, four guards, and their lone forward, the sixth man of the year that we highlighted. The big man, Say Witt, they go right into him, swings it for a three for Black, right corner, off the mark, and a rebound corral by the Ospreys. Well, great shot there. I mean, obviously the double team came over and Say saw Javante was wide open and just misses that one. Here is Lateris into the paint using his size, put it up and in. He's listed as a guard, but six foot six, and he had an 18-point game against these Cubs here in the earlier meeting. Yeah, you have great, uh, these guards are all pretty much could play forward if they really wanted to. They have great length. Handoff right back to Jones at rimmed out. Heartbreak for Desi, who's played just great basketball down the stretch. 21 points, five assists a game down the uh, final eight games of the season. Backdoor cut, James gets the layup. He's off to the four-point start, and the Ospreys are off to a 6-0 start, and that leads to a timeout by Coach Corey Gibson. The last two time, the last time this, these two teams met, it was at North Florida who dominated the paint more than it was Austin P because those guards who are built like forwards were able to get inside and make things happen. And they did not double team say well, this time they do. They hack him as he catches at the right block. He loves the left block, but this time gets over to the right block and he draws the first foul of the ball game. Miles will pick it up. So the freshman came out to help out James. He'll get the first foul of the game. And they're going to say it's on the floor, was not gathering to go up. So no free throws. Say Witt with the monster game in the earlier meeting. 30 points, his career high against this team. And again, they chose to just single cover him that night. They're not doing that early. He goes to work on the right block. Yeah, that time he was able to go. He had a much, the much bigger defensive player, or much, or much smaller defensive player, I should say, and Jalen Smith trying to guard him, and he just makes him pay inside in the paint. If Say gets that all night, he will continue to dominate and probably put up career numbers. James will bring Witt way out on the floor. They like to play five out. The Birds and Trey is what they're called. They have made the most three-pointers per game, which is 12, and they've attempted the most per game in the nation as they let it fly 33 times a night from behind the arc. Yeah, and we talked about the last time they were in this building, they only hit seven. It was well under. In a double overtime game, you got to think if some of those fall, North Florida maybe pulls away in that game, but just struggled to get anything to drop. And Austin P, the number one team at defending the three. Smith all the way through, can't hit the reverse. And the Govs really were picking their poison that night, trying to limit the three-point shots. And as Ethan just mentioned, they finished 7 of 18 in that earlier meeting, but they got a lot of shots in the paint. Here's Witt, attacks the paint. Some contact, no call as he misses, and it's cleared out of there by Josiah Miles. Two freshmen that start, Smith the point guard, and Miles at their uh, three-guard spot. Now James will hand it off to Miles. Miles gets the step on Witt. Witt bothers the shot and will head the other way. Now Desi Jones had a 22-point game, eight rebounds, eight assists against these Ospreys. That was the first game without DeMarcus Sharp as he missed six games due to injury and the Gus got that thrilling victory. Out to Black is three this time off the mark. He's missed two from that same spot. Govs aren't crashing either. A lot of these are uh, shots that they're just thinking are going to fall, and, and you can't blame them. The end of the season, Jamonte and Des White with career uh, finishes to their season, knocking down the three ball. And really, you think maybe they pick up where they left off, and so far, Jamonte's 0 for 2 from 3. Govs have to keep trying to get something working inside, and, and that's what's going to be with DeMarcus Sharp coming in. As Isaac Haney checks in, you're going to try to get DeMarcus Sharp in there, see if he can't get that mid-range game going. Ja MC has checked in. He didn't play the earlier meeting, but has played well down the stretch. 6'4 sophomore. Oscar Berry is also in from Australia, the transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson. As Ethan mentioned, DeMarcus Sharp returning for his third game now. As he played 30 minutes against EKU, about 26 against Bellerman. Trying to work his way back into a team that's playing differently without him. And they played extremely well without him, which was a shot. Underneath to James, and Jones knocked it off of James. will get the turnover to the Governors. And Dorian James, he has the size advantage there on the switch as Desi Jones was trying to come back. But Desi Jones, just a quick hand, said, I don't want to be on some sort of poster tonight. I'm going to make sure that I just get that quick hand and try to force this. Sharp's going to go to work on MZ, hits the cutter. Whip, got it blocked. A race out of there. 
Big time block on the interior as James got a piece of it. And that's the way to recover, right? Dorian James, we just saw he had a pocket pick down on the other side. Comes in this time and just gets the huge block on Say Witt. Number five all time in blocks at UNF. Beautiful inbound speed to Witt. He goes back to work as he has all four of the Austin P points. Well, the Dubs have been able to get some of these baskets going with Say Witt moving towards the basket. We know he likes to back down his defender, so he's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. He's got to get in rhythm, and that's a good start for him. NZ gets the switch on Witt, bangs into him a couple of times, and powers it up and in for his first two off the bench. Well, good job there by NZ getting inside, just making sure that he's able to absorb any of the contact that he got and still knock down the basket. So Sharp, again, did not play in the earlier meeting, so adds a different element to this offense that the uh, Ospreys didn't see. Witt, jump ball as he went up. Had to call something, either a jump or a travel possession arrow points to Austin P. And we are going to head to our first break. The Ospreys jumped out to a 6-0 start. The Gums have fought back 8-4 in the quarterfinals of the A-Sun men's basketball tournament. Back here in the Effingham Bank Arena. 8-4 lead for the visitors. Jones missed the shot. Somehow came out of there with it. Put it back up this time. It stays in for Desi Jones. The grad transfer out of Hannibal, Missouri. And man, has he played good basketball down the stretch. Absolutely. Desi Jones is just a fantastic, uh, fantastic athlete nonetheless. We've seen him so many times, just those quick active hands. You watch him there, that's the big thing for me is just, he misses his shot, can't get the rebound, but what does he do? He wrestles around there to try to snag it away and ends up getting the steal and then gets two points off of it. Set to inbound is Smith. He'll get it to Dorian James and right back to Ja NZ. Jumper from three off that left side. Rattles home, it's good. Jake Vanderheiden, that's the first three attempt tonight, the first one to go down as Vanderheiden gets his 53rd make from downtown. You gotta think Coach Driscoll, he said, hey, we gotta remember who, who we are as a team, right? If we call ourselves the birds of trade, we gotta knock down some three balls. So Goes far, so good. With a lot of contact, no call. He gets his second shot blocked in there. James and NZ combined for that one. Straight away three in transition off the mark. Missed by Smith, the point guard. Young freshman out of Florida. Okoye, here's a three. Des White, the all-time freshman single season mark. He broke that here Friday night. This one off the mark. As we will keep our eyes on that three-point line all night. It was a big difference in the earlier meeting. Way off the mark is Smith. Somehow it's saved by Vander hiding the right into Witt. Two on two, the big man rumbling right down the floor, all the way in, put it up, say Witt, the big cat number, coast to coast. Well, we call him the big cat because he makes moves like that happen, right? Uses the big paw, slaps one down for the steal, and then he doesn't pass it off. Coast to coast to lay that one in. The big cat feeling it already. James will pull him out on the floor and screen. James, good ball handler as well, despite being a 6'7", really their only post player. But they keep that paint open for driving, for threes. Here's the three. That looked off the mark when he let it fly. Sharp somehow hung in the air to get that rebound as MZ's three off the mark. Here's Sharp. Quick move right into the shot blocker's chest. That's what you do in the first two for DeMarcus. At some point we were waiting, when is DeMarcus Sharp going to get back to form, right? When is he just going to put the team on his back? And we know that he can. He can take games over. So far, that's a great look from him. Into James. Sets a big time screen. Witt has to come over. They're going to get saved for the foul. And you know, you wonder about the contact that Say is absorbed at the other end without a whistle. And he gets the call here the first of the night. That brings out the Blue Birds. Yeah, Say Witt, I mean, he went up in the air. I know a lot of times, obviously, if you set your feet, and you're in that restricted circle or the half circle, if you will, you'll get that call. But I mean, say it looked like he jumped with them the entire time as NZ knocks that one down, but it looked like he did a great job to just kind of try to affect the shot, which he did. 
But again, I mean, obviously picking up a foul, he's got to be careful here. We know in the last game he had to miss a lot of time against Bellarmine in that first half because of early foul trouble. NC with four quick points off the bench. He averages eight a game. The 6'4 sophomore. Sharp outruns everybody, hangs in the air, gets the finish. Four point start to the game for DeMarcus Sharp. If he can work that back in, I think that's what Austin P's really been missing. If you can get the scoring from the other players on this team but have him do that, you're in for an easy night for the Dubs. Big rebound by Haney. The Smith missed on the drive. Haney's going to take it coast to coast. Bangs into the defender off the window and put it ice, ice Haney. Now that's something that Isaac Haney has developed as well. We were wanting to see who he could be for this team. And Isaac Haney, man, he is a guy who can drive inside. Usually gets that uh, and one call on a basket like that, but he's happy to get the points and give the Dubs the lead. First lead of the night for Austin Peay. They trailed 6-0 to start the game, and Corey Gibson had to burn a timeout. NZ with size, goes into the paint, puts it in. This is a man possessed tonight. Six quick points off the bench for the sophomore. God, I love to see NZ. No fear going inside. He knows how to uh, really silence this crowd so far tonight as well. Every basket he's had has really stopped some momentum for the Governors. Now Desi Jones to Haney. Sharp has four, Witt has six, and the leading scores. Witt with the catch, goes all the way under, put it up, missed it, followed it back up in. He's a little upset with himself for hitting the bottom of the rim, but he stayed with it. Nobody knew it. Eight points, two rebounds now for Say. Already off to a great start. Straight away three, rimmed out, went all the way down and popped out for Vander Heiden. He hit one earlier, the transfer from Bucknell. Now Haney, as the Govs catch their breath for a moment in their half-court offense. They played at a really slow pace for much of the first half of the year, but they have picked up that pace when they play here in this building. Jones got it, five on the timer, into Witt. Witt's got to go as he looked at the other shot clock there, there into the four, draws the foul. Shot wouldn't go, but this time the Big Cat will go to the free throw line to shoot two. As Lanier called for the foul, his first second on the Ospreys. We hit our second. Media. We welcome you back to the f and Bank Arena tonight. Four games in the A-Sun tournament. We will be checking that scoreboard throughout the night. At halftime, we'll get you an update. Hopefully, we'll have uh, some final scores by halftime from the games played in Richmond, Kentucky tonight and down in Deland, Florida. Again, if either one of those teams get upset, if both teams get upset, Austin Peay could be looking at another home game or the winner of this game possibly could be. So, a lot going on here at March Madness. Yeah, absolutely, it's, a, it's that point, right? You have to win to advance. You have to win to stay alive. And we have some really good ones right now in the ASA, including the one that we're getting treated to right now. Say Witt was named the sixth man of the year in the conference. What a deserving honor that he received. This guy from, from day one, you mentioned it Friday night, from that opening game to now, just doesn't even resemble the same player. Man, what improvement. And he came in, and obviously he's one of the transfers, and he came from Lincoln. And if you know anything about Lincoln University, it's a division two in Jefferson City in Missouri. And, and again, we'll talk a lot about Missouri here on this team for Austin P. But he came from a really good Division II program. They played the likes of uh, Northwest Missouri State, a multiple time national champion at the D2 level. So he's been tried and true. It's just at the D1 level, it might have took him a little bit of time to get adjusted to it. But since he has, it's been fantastic. Oh, what a defensive clinic put on by DeMarcus Sharp. And then that back door works again, Jake Vanderheiden. What happens, though, is you got to lock down on three. That's what Austin Peay's trying to take the three away so you can backdoor him, and that's happened a few times tonight. Jones, he'll step back. He's been watching DeMarcus do it all year. Who buries one? Yeah, Desi's picked up right where DeMarcus left off a lot of these games where uh, DeMarcus Sharp wasn't playing. We saw Desi just kind of hit those mid-range shots. He's been left open, and when he does get left open like that, he has made everyone pay. Desi Jones continues to have a fantastic season. Miles will dump it in. There's that size advantage going to work. Put it up with that left hand. Several bounces, and it drops for Vander Heiden. How about a seven-point game for him? You couple Ja and Z off the bench, and that bench for Matthew Driscoll is delivering tonight. Oh, Vander Heiden, that was a great play. He got a lot of a friendly bounce, though. He's probably happy that it bounced the way it did, but that was a great take, and he knows he has the size advantage. He'll continue to do that. 
13 bench points for the Ospreys tonight. Sharp in no man's land, gets rid of it to Jones. Now the Gums will reset it with seven on the timer to Des White. White into the paint, a rare drive for him. Put it up, contact, no call, ball tipped out, and it will go over to UNF. A great job there by Isaac Caney to just pop that one out. So Wick coming in, that's uh, obviously giving Des White a chance to go talk with Coach Corey Gibson again. He's a freshman, he's on this all a Sun freshman team. We've seen a lot of great freshman talent this year as well. Uh, on a lot of these teams, including North Florida. Central Arkansas has a lot of great young guys on their team. But Des White, man, he has had to step up in a big way, play a lot of valuable minutes for this governor's team. And he's been tested and road tested, and he has done the exact job that he was supposed to do. Witt reaches in and ties up Chaz Lanier. He came over to help. They were trying to screen his man, and he just stayed there and doubled and tied him up in the possession arrow points to the Ospreys. A great job by Say to come out there, and, and Chaz Lanier, he's one of those players, you can't let him warm up, you can't let him heat up at all. You have to be able to kind of smother him, and that's what Austin P's done thus far. I mean, they've been bringing out the double team at the three-point line. They'll get the hand check. Up top on Isaac Haney. No field goal attempts yet for Chaz Lanier, and he looked this place up in that earlier meeting. 33 points, eight rebounds, he hit four three-pointers. And again, he's from nearby Nashville, about an hour away, played at Innsworth High School. He had his big cheering section here that night, and they are back again here this evening. Yeah, we got a, a Nashville player. We have a Clarksville player we'll talk about as well in this broadcast. Here's a jumper off a nice set play. Wouldn't go from three out of that right corner. Lanier's first look of the game off the mark. We're going to get a foul on the uh, attempted rebound. Looks like Josiah Miles will pick up number two. Third team foul on the Ospreys, just two so far on Austin P. 2019, just as we expected, a tight affair between these two teams. That's all they know is to, when they get together, play close games. Sharp looks on the inside. You see the Ospreys playing a zone this time. They're mixing it up. Black, a deep three ball. Off the mark, tipped around, and controlled by UNF. Again, not a bad area for Jamonte Black, left open. We've seen him knock those down. Just has that one rattle off. And we got the two, the top two three-point shooters in the league tonight, Lanier and Black. They each have missed last trip down the floor, each looking for their first points tonight. Here's Lateris, goes to work, spinning. Woods already committed a foul, can't commit another. Lateris gets an open look, he's got four. Great finish there by Lateris. And again, you mentioned him, 18 points. The last time he was here, he had a fantastic outing as well. Averaging 10 a game, had a huge night. Here is the step back. Sharp with a pro move that leaned in to get the separation and his patented step back. He's off to a six-point start. Snaps a 230 scoring drought as well for the Governors with that made basket there. I did get a note here, Barry. The decimal level hit 102. I think it was on those boo birds earlier on, but <laughs> it's been loud in here in FM Bank Arena so far. Already five lead changes. Just what we expected tonight. Reach in, Black got the steal. Dives on the floor and get it to Sharp. Those two have played a lot of basketball together. They don't want their careers to end here tonight. They want to live to see another day. Here's Haney into the contact. He got it blocked. Popping up and down. Disagreeing with the call is Dorian James. Coach Driscoll saying the rule of verticality he went straight up, but I think when he came down, though, he had a 50% field goal shooter, 40% from three, 90% free throw shooter. First player ever in the A-Sun to do that with 100 field goals and 53 pointers. And he's just off for one tonight as the Gus are going to do their best to contain him. That's hard to do. Yeah, absolutely. You're talking about uh, a full-time job just to guard Chaz Lanier. And, I mean, those numbers, astronomical and I mean, just a fantastic player has been Chaz Lanier for this North Florida squad. I mean, he could tell something, uh, even last year, he didn't play as much, but you could tell there was something special in some of the minutes that he got. And this year, he's completely uh, shown the A-Sun what he can do. Haney misses both. That foul was on James going to break. Yeah, Lanier last year, four points, two rebounds. And Coach Driscoll has said the biggest difference is his confidence is through the roof this year. Came from a basketball family. His dad played at Lipscomb. And I'm sure is probably here in attendance tonight rooting him on. Despite the Bisons <laughs> playing yeah. at the same time. He, he probably had the other ESPN Plus broadcast up there watching both. 
but definitely got to love being able to see your son play uh, against your alma mater. I mean, obviously, you probably love to see him play for your alma mater, yeah. but uh, definitely a, a cool moment for him to at least see his son being able to continue the family legacy. That foul, by the way, on Sharp, his first. Here is Smith, a member of the all-freshman team, left it short right on the doorstep, and Whip pulls down the rebound. Haney with two points, missed those two free throws, tried to set up Black right back to Haney, his three ball short. Running the floor, tough pass at the feet of Dorian James, and the Ospreys turn it over. You know, and Dorian James, he's not, you know, a, a true center, if you will, uh, but you can definitely tell for him that's not where you're going to want that, right? Any big man is going to want that one where it's a little bit higher up for you. He just didn't get it there. He's definitely uh, kicking himself because that's a long way down for a six foot seven guy <laughs> to have to try to grab that one at the shoestrings and make a play. But he was open if he just got that one where he would have liked it. Into Witt. Here comes the double against Lanier and James, and Witt stumbles out of there. Well, they're making him earn it tonight. They have banged him every time he's caught the ball. Here's a kick by Black. Shot clock will stay at 24. Javante will get a chance to get Say Whip back. That's you know one of those ones where you're kind of happy he does that just to get a chance to get your team lined up and, and get them ready here. Five road wins for the Ospreys this year. Four of them coming in a sun play. The Govs have been just about unbeatable here at home. 12 and 2. They had an eight-game winning streak at one point. James with a step. He's good off the bounce. That's where he, you know, he can play out on the floor. We see him a lot of times to set that screen up high. And he shows the ball handling ability there. That's six for James already. Whip was going to screen. It wasn't ready for the pass. And a reach in tie up possession arrow stays with Austin P. Yeah, Coach Corey Gibson just uh Shaking his head there. That's not a design play. He doesn't, it's not what he gets from Say Witt and Desi Jones. There's Witt in his office. Again, heavily contested. Well, the focal point tonight for Austin P to stop Lanier and for UNF, it's to stop Say Witt. He's already got the 10 points, but he's earned every one of those in the paint. Here's a three. Banging it in is James, showing the range. Dorian James has woke up since that last media, right? He's fired up, comes out, had that great move, that great layup, then fires the second made three for this Ospreys team. Already nine points for James. He averages 10 a game in their lead rebounder on the season. Now Jones. Whip backs out and lets him operate against the bigger James. Well, he's a tough guy to go against, and a good back tap from behind by Lanier. Here's the Ospreys on the move. Be careful with stepping into a three in transition. Knocked home. This guy's come to play tonight. Ja NZ. Ja NZ, that's pure. I mean, just absolutely on the trailer, able to knock that one down. Gubbs got to be a little bit smarter with the ball here. They've thrown away a couple here. They might look at that one on the next media as his toe was very close to the line. Sharp going one on one. Put it up and in. Demarcus with the eight point game coming in off the bench tonight. Yeah, Demarcus comes back down the floor and lets Chaz Lanier know I'm going to be here all night, offensively and defensively. And they're going to get the push on Witt. As Jalen Smith got the step, he was a little off balance. Witt did put the arm out, and that'll be foul number two on some first teamers. Not going to do it. They know where to go to attack. And again, you know, we've talked a lot about these teams and you know, knowing what's on the line, right? For Austin P, the big thing, knowing, you know, this could be your last ever game for guys like DeMarc Sharp, guys like Jamonte Black, Say Witt, Desi Jones. And for North Florida, they still have a little bit of a younger roster, right? They, they're they just trying to play spoiler, really, for these, uh, these older guys for Austin P. Off the inbound, up high to James in the paint, double team. Haney got a lot of the ball. James goes back up over two smaller defenders. Can't get the shot to go, and it bounces off. Austin P. That's one thing that Austin P does really well, right? They're able to really pick the pocket of anybody, and you'll watch them hustle on those steals. Earlier, Jamonte, I mean, he fell for one, but he had picked it clean, and had he had not slipped on his own feet there, he would have been all the way. They go again to the lob off the inbounds, into James, who's having a big first half. He bangs against a smaller shot. Sharp on the right down, the steals lead in the A-Sun. Give him another one. Here's Jones to Haney, right back to Desi. 
He gets two defenders jumping, sets up block. His three this time is good, first of the night. And there he is, number four, the all-time season leader in made threes in a governor's uniform. Jamonte Black knocking that one down, finally feeling it. First three of the night for Austin P. They had missed their first six before Black was able to ring the bell. Here's Lanier, caught it low, came up in motion, missed that deep three. He's still scoreless. The number two score in the conference this year. First teamer, all A Sun. The Gubs are locking him down here early. Sharp into the paint. Spins, fade away, off the mark, rebound, tipped up and in. He's back, Marks Hansel and Manuel. Well, Hansel missed the past couple of games, and we thought maybe we'd see him in some valuable minutes there in the season finale, but he didn't really step out. Good thing we see him tonight as he gets that little put back there. Man, he is sneaky. We'll get in there and pop that one in. Gubbs on a 7-0 run, and the quick answer for three is Smith. good by Smith. Smith hadn't made one before that, 0 of 5, 0 of 2. Finally knocks one down, and now he's working in there. He gets his 40th make from downtown this year. Now Sharp. Dribble off the shoot tops. More ISO ball tonight with Sharp off to the good start. Just throws one up and throws it in. Oh, wow, against the shot blocker. Circus shot for DeMarcus. Yeah, DeMarcus Sharp, we know that he's able to make those shots. That fadeaway is absolutely lethal. Tough bounce pass to James. It was tipped out to NZ. And Manuel with the assignment missed those uh, last three games, and he got the step in Z, but he blew the shot. Hansel is the leading shot blocker for Austin P on the year. Reach in foul. Picked up by all A Sun freshman team member Jalen Smith. Well, the Cubs have a chance here to take the lead. Obviously, they've done a great job forcing turnovers here. Five so far for North Florida, coming off three steals by the Governors. Now Austin P has to figure out how to slow this one down for a little bit, try to take the lead with, with a smaller lineup, and, and Manuel is your biggest guy on the floor right now. Cubs have hit four of their last five. And the third game back, we're seeing more isolation for Sharp as he goes to work on Lanier. Great matchup, two really good players. Fade away, tough baseline for Sharp. He's in his bag tonight. Smith works against a good defender in black. NZ has been big off the bench so far tonight with nine points. He works on Emmanuel. Tough finish. Very impressive as the freshman of the sophomore, beg your pardon, Jai NZ. Yeah, that's some great takes, and he's doing it the exact way every time. Driving inside, knows he has a bigger defender trying to guard him, and he's still attacking. He's getting those points off of it. Back to Sharp. This looks like the Gubs. Offense for, for much of the year with Sharp in there where they ISO clear out of side and let him go to work. No double. He's going straight up with Lanier. Works him down into the paint. Fade away over him. Off the mark. So we got so used to six games he was out with the ball movement. But the Govs here tonight with Sharp on a heater. They're clearing out the side and letting him ISO. And you have to do that. You have no inside attack really with Say Whip on the bench right now. Final seconds. Ospreys with the lead here on the road by one. Lanier, can he get some points before the half ends? He will. Oh, missed it. I thought he had that one. It pops out on him with three seconds to go. Ball deflected. Black will let it fly. It's off the mark. And we've come to the end of the first half to play. If anything could happen. As we check the starters, ready to go for the second half. It looks like the original five. With the exception of DeMarcus Sharp, we'll start this second half. Didn't start tonight. He will start in place of Des White here in the second half. 14 points for Sharp on a mission tonight. Made the third team all a son, but his top 10 in multiple categories. But that six games he missed down the stretch cost him some of these postseason awards. And here is Lanier on the switch. Got the step on Witt. Now, this looks like Lanier from last month. Yeah, that's got to be something that Coach Driscoll said, point of impact for you is to come out, 
and actually get something going. You're our best offensive weapon. You have to make something happen, and already a good start for Lanier. 33 in the last meeting. That's his first two of the night. Sharp goes to work on a tough shot. Whip pinballs it around, put it up and in. Same Whip giving 12 points now to Gums. It's been a two-man game. Sharp and Whip doing all the scoring tonight. Well, Barry, just want to say down goes the one seed. Jacksonville takes the win, 67-65. That's our update from Richmond. Unbelievable. So the 10 seed, last team to get in. The Dolphins of Jacksonville will move on. And if Stetson hangs on, they'll play at Stetson, and James goes to work. Boy, he had a good first half. He hits double figures with 11. Great take there by Dorian James as well to sky up over the defender and able to just get that little hook shot to fall. And again, say Witt with two fouls has to be careful, and already we're seeing that early on in this one. He doesn't want any ticky-tack fouls that get him out of this game. Sharp, he goes to work as well. 16 for DeMarcus tonight. He hits his season's average. Now Jalen Smith, the point guard, hit a three-pointer in that first half for his only points. He made the all-freshman team. He took over for Amitri Moss, a Clarksville native, played here at Northwest High School. He's having a great year until he went down with a knee injury, and the young man stepped up and has played big-time basketball. Now we talked to Coach Driscoll before the game, and he said, you know, Amitri Moss, he's, he's, this is a homecoming for him. He was here the last time. Had the knee brace on. He looks like he's in great spirits without it, obviously, in his warm-ups. But you have to think, what does Dimitri Moss add? He mentioned where he yeah. was before the injury. He could be a definite, uh, you know, this is one of those things where you look at your team when, before he gets injured, where they were, where North Florida was actually at yep. in the standings. And kind of just having that, you know, double-head attack there between Moss and Lanier, that's a, that's a tough thing to stop. And you can tell how much he's missed. Yes, Smith took over, started now 16 straight games since the Moss injury. And to show you how good he is, again, he made the all-freshman team, really stepped up for Coach Driscoll in his club. And we're going to get the foul as Witt is going to work. But James will get foul number two. So Miles and James with two each for UNF. Say Witt and Isaac Haney had two each for Austin P. So fouls have not been an issue so far tonight. I think Dorian James just gets caught a little bit there trying to hook under the arm of Say Witt. That's where that call is going to come from. Just two for Desi Jones so far. Here's Witt and James getting hooked up again off the ball. Jones, they just forgot about him, and he hit the shot right at the foul line. And again, we talked about that, right? Desi Jones had to pick that up for DeMarcus Sharp when he was injured. And Desi Jones comes inside and says, well, if no one's going to stop me, I'm going to make this shot. Strong drive by Smith. Again, they'll penetrate and kick out for these threes. The Birds and Trey lighting it up. First three of the night for Nate Lateris. Nate Lateris, I mean, that's a beautiful shot. Desi Jones can't come out and guard him in time, and he's going to make the Govs pay. He has nobody there, no hand in his face, and that's an easy shot for Lateris. Here's Witt where he likes it off that left block. Reach in, double team came, and tried to save it back in. They're going to say it's off Austin Peay. It'll go to UNF. And Say, say just tries to close out. Lateris watches as Say gets a little bit of contact there on the ball and does the heads-up thing to obviously pull back in time for that one to get called against Say. Just the second turnover of the night. Austin P. rarely turns it over. Seventh in the nation. They only turn it over nine times per game. And as I mentioned, just the second of the night. Here's Smith. Lateris, who had uh, the big ball game here against the Govs last month with 18. Smith goes to work on a really good defender to use the rim to his advantage that time. Seven now for Smith. Four here in the second half. It's just a great take, right? Going underneath the basket. Trust your English off the shot. Gets that one to go. Six-point advantage for the Ospreys. Trying to move on, get to the final four in the A-Sun tournament. Sharp into the paint, deep in the paint. Out to Jones. His three left wing off the mark. Tip back out. Jones will bat it back out to Sharp. Javante Black always a threat. Has hit the one three for his only uh, points tonight. But teams always know where he's at on the floor. Jones looking for Sharp. It's been Sharp and Witt posting up tonight. Swing it for a black three ball. Good! Javante Black beats the buzzer there. What a shot. That's another player that has to wake up the last time these two teams met. 21 points for Javante Black. Right now only six. 
385 career threes with that one. A beautiful take. Luteris with that wingspan at 6'6". The transfer from Longwood hangs in the air off the window, draws the foul. KU and Richmond tonight, so the 10th seeded Dolphins get the victory, 67-65. Stetson, the two seed. They beat Queens tonight, 83-71. That sets up the top end of the bracket for the semifinals as the 10 seeded Dolphins of Jacksonville will take on the two seed Stetson on Thursday night. We have a lot of work to do to determine who's going to be at the bottom end of the bracket between Austin P and North Florida here and North Alabama continues to lead at Lipscomb. Well, Terrace completes the three-point play. Ten points for him tonight. Sharp goes to work on Lanier. Tough shot. Tipped up by Emmanuel. He got a tip in in that first half. As Smith, the, the freshman point guard, seven for him tonight. He'll give it up for Dorian James. Lanier again with just two, got him in this half. There's his first three. He's heating up. And yeah, that's a great take there by Chaz Lanier. And again, after the first half struggles, you want to see him do that if you're North Florida. It's a great shot selection there. And this 6-0 run, North Florida, they're a team that can go on those runs. And if they can hit threes, that's a huge part of this for him is, is just being able to get those three balls down. That's their biggest lead of the night right now at nine. They led by one at the break. And the Govs going to the post-up game tonight. A Witt and Sharp just trading trips each time down the floor. Oh, shot goes for Witt. He's fouled. Count the bucket. Chance at a three-point play for the Big Cat. And foul number three on Dorian James. As we will see Jake Vanderheiden come in, the grad transfer from Raleigh, North Carolina. Played at Bucknell for four years, just three points, two boards a game. For Bucknell a year ago, he's six points, three boards this year for Coach Driscoll. Seven points for him in the first half. Really played well as that bench really brought it for the Ospreys tonight. Witt hit his first two free throws of the night, and he misses a chance to complete the three-point play. Say with 12 points, the ace son sixth man of the year. Lanier draws a double. Sharp's done a really good job on him tonight. Backdoor cut. Went with the quick hands. He goes to the floor. Gets it up to Jones. Desi runs the floor. Two on two, and he'll retreat and reset it in the half court. Bounce it into Witt. Witt goes banging into Vanderheiden. The ball comes free. Picked it up and put it in. Well, say Witt. He's one of those guys that's going to continue to attack. He's someone that you don't want to get hot if you were in North Florida. Jumper for three. Wow, who do you leave open on this team? Lateris again lighting it up. Two threes here in the second half. 13 points for him. Like we said, they only made seven in that first meeting. They're at seven currently. They were seven, I believe, of 29 in that game. Seven of 13 right now, shooting almost 54% from three so far in this contest are the Ospreys. With good help by Lateris. It's 6'6", got a wingspan, he got the block shot. And back the other way come the Ospreys, really playing well here in the second half on the road. Beautiful take by Smith. Smith, I mean, showing off why he was on the all-A-Sun freshman team. That's a phenomenal take and a phenomenal finish there. He's got nine, averages six a game. The freshman out of Ocoee, Florida. Here's Whip, two-man game, bangs into the defender, blocking foul. As Lanier with the palms up raised against the basket stanchion. Didn't get to the spot in time. The nimble feet of the big cat off that two-man pick and roll. Draws the second foul on Lanier. He's put three on Dorian James as well. Coach Driscoll not happy all the way. Uh, <laughs> comes all the way out to about half court. To speak to the officials here. He wanted to talk to his young freshman as well as he checks out. Ospreys on a 22-13 run out of the locker room for their biggest lead of the night at 10 points. Again, they put the most points on the board of any team that's played in this building this year. Of course, it was double overtime, but they scored 91 and lost 95-91 to the Govs back on February 3rd. Whip pulls the string. He's 0 for 2 at the foul line this half. 
14 for the big man. At his career high, 30 points against these Ospreys. And that double overtime win. But they are defending him differently tonight. The struggles continuing as a team now. From the free throw line, two of seven are the Governors from the charity strike. The Govs really struggled in that earlier meeting at the free throw line as well. Wood had most of those, and they could not close out the game, but finally winning it in the second overtime. NZ rattled out a three. White tipped it and able to tightrope his shot. Back to Wood. He tries to tightrope it, and there it is called for the push. That's the first. Well, the acrobatics, right? That's the big thing there. You get to see Saywood and DeMarcus Sharp both trying to trying to see who's going to be able to save that one in, and Barry ends up getting called for the foul. Almost bails out Austin P. more than anything. Gavs down 10. Again, it's been more post-up isolation tonight, getting away from a lot of that ball movement. And it's been Sharp and Witt going to work. Now Sharp here on a clear out. He'll drive on Vanderheide, spinning back into the double team. Here's Jones, his three ball off the mark. Long rebound on the miss, and here come the Ospreys. Here's Lanier. Lanier into White. Sharp blocked the shot, so no chance of the three-point play, but a veteran move by Chaz Lanier to lean in to get the contact on the freshman. Yeah, he knew Des White was pretty much skating backwards, had nowhere to go. All he could do was foul. Chaz Lanier goes right into the body, ends up at the free throw line. First time to the line tonight for Lanier. An 88% free throw shooter is the best, number two that is, in the uh, A-Sun at the foul line. Just a good shooter from all three levels. He gets one of two, and the Ospreys continue to build on that big lead. Jones will screen for Black. Desi drives, kicks it out. Des White, three right corner. Rimmed out. Three ball just not going tonight for Austin P. Now Jones in the coffin corner gets rid of it to Haney. Can he go to work on Vanderheide? Makes his move, spins. Vanderheide blocks it. Back into the defender. Haney puts it in and he's fouled. The stick to it of this from the young man from West Plains, Missouri. Four points for Haney. If North Alabama were to hang on and win that game, the winner of this game would host them Thursday night. And again, if Lipscomb rallies, comes back to win it, the winner of this game would go to Lipscomb Thursday night. So we are getting down to the nitty-gritty. Already tonight, Jacksonville is upset the one seed, so Jacksonville, the number 10 seed, last team to get in. They will play at Stetson Thursday night, the two seed. Jacksonville, thankful that Austin P. Didn't lose that, <laughs> that final in overtime to Bellerman. That's right. That would have put Bellerman yeah, in. The uh, Knights had a chance. It's amazing how that happens this time of year. A team that gets in last minute can make a run. Haney completes a three-point play. Govs just 2 of 11, three-point land tonight. They're going to have to make some threes to get back into this ball game. The pressure broken and a beautiful block by Sharp. Staying with it with the size, Jake Vanderheiden give him nine points, 6-8. But Sharp blocked that first one, but he stayed with it. Yeah, Vanderheide, that's a great finish there to just follow your shot and put it right back in. And again, these forwards, if you will, these listless guards just have so much size and wingspan on Austin P. Haney goes to work. It hit the back of the iron. He tried to tip it back up and in. He couldn't. Ten-point advantage for the Ospreys. Trying to get that sixth road win of the year and possibly get a home game. Thursday night if UNA pulls out the upset. Here's a jumper off the mark by NZ. James had a hand on it. He kept it alive. Vanderheide put it up. Heartbreak in there. Wouldn't go. Sharp tips it. And the Govs dodge a bullet as Desi Jones at 5'10 comes out of there with a rebound. <laughs> he just always brings a smile to my face when Desi Jones is the guy that comes down with a rebound when there's so many taller defenders around him. The C parts in there. You can't see anybody. He comes out of there with it. Sharp, big-time finish. He's done that all night tonight. 18 for DeMarcus. 
Austin Peay's had some good defensive stands now. They're going to have to continue it. They have to fight for these rebounds, eliminate these second chance opportunities, and then come back down and score. If not, North Florida, they have been lights out. Barry heading downhill, wanted to kick back for a three-pointer. Nobody home. Now back to NZ. NZ with 11 in the first half, none here in the second as he works on Haney. Wants to back him down into the paint, spins, and Haney just grabbed him. They were going to count that if it went. It didn't. But Haney gets the foul. He is the first governor to pick up three fouls tonight. And Haney just lost NZ. It was a good spin, good take there. Got Haney missing one way, turns back the other. And you're right, NZ, they were going to count that basket. This goes up a little bit too strong. Two of two in the first half for NZ. The 6'4 sophomore, 81% free throw shooter. As he shows us again why as he drains this first one. So Barry, backup point guard, who played last year. He started in that game at the Dunn Center. But Jalen Smith has been a star tonight as he's back in. Nine points for him, the all a sub freshman team member. One out of two for NZ. Does need to get it going. Trailed by double digits for a good portion of the second half. Haney's really picked his game up. Count is fouled. Oh, he just gets to another level. Still waiting for the headbutt with Wendy's. I don't know if Coach Taylor is not allowed to do that anymore. Normally he gives Wendy a big headbutt there on one of those. But, man, back-to-back -back drives for him where he gets back in there. And Isaac Haney, he's one of those players. When you talk about it, they give him the, nice, the nickname Ice Ice Haney, but... The big thing for me is a lot of times he gets that fire started for the governors. When he's on and he gets hot, it is hard to get him cooled down. But you can see that it trickles out to the rest of the team as well. NZ picked up the foul his first. 16th foul on the Ospreys here in the second half. And Haney with a couple of three-point plays here in the second half. Giving eight in the ball game. Guys who cut it back to six. 9.35 to play. Jones coming around. Had a lot of ball. They're going to say he got him with that off arm. He doesn't agree. That's number one on Desi Jones. Fifteen foul on the guns against 16 fouls on UNF. A lot of times it's hard on that foul because you see Desi being such the smaller player that you're like, man, that arm of... Vander is just so much longer than his. There's no way that doesn't get the foul, but just had him kind of wrapped around is what the call is. Miles, the freshman, works on the dribble. Backdoor Vander has got the size as he backs down Haney. Haney on the reach. Shot misses, but that's number four on Haney, and he's been giving the team a big lift offensively. But again, spread the floor tonight. Let the bigger guys listed as guards, but forwards back down the smaller player. And that's worked well tonight for the Ospreys. Yeah, absolutely. Vander Heiden's had a phenomenal night coming in. And you mentioned those players off the bench for North Florida. And they've been phenomenal coming into this game. NZ, Vander Heiden have stepped up and really played great ball. Vander Hyden buries them both. 11 for him tonight. He averages six points per game. As he hits double figures for the ninth time this year, had three points in the earlier meeting. You know, it's always good when you give way to a 6'8 guy, and Vander Hyden, the guy that comes and replaces him, is 6'6. Six, six. I mean, that's when you know you have a lot of great depth on this team for North Florida. Let's go to Sharp. They bounced it off the shoot tops, but he recovered. Here's Haney. He's just in full attack mode. Was hoping to hear a whistle as he went into the paint, left it short. The Terrace has stepped right out of his shoes at midcourt. The official's going to hold play up. Let him get reset. The Chaz Lanier tonight, six points for him. The number two scorer in the A-Sun, and A-Sun all first team selection. Had 33 on the gums in the earlier meeting. He's just two of five tonight. And the guy that's been assigned to him as Agent Zero, DeMarcus Sharp, has not only done it with 18 points offensively, but it's been like a glove on Lanier tonight. Yeah, absolutely. The, the defense on Lanier, I mean, you can see DeMarcus Sharp fighting through everybody to stay on Lanier. He does not want him to win this game for North Florida. 
And Lanier, most of his points were just like this. In that earlier meeting, just coming right down Broadway. Gums could not contain him off the bounce, and that's one of the few times he's gotten loose tonight. Yeah, great screens along the way for him to just be able to attack. Now Sharp, he'll go banging into Dorian James, and he can't believe it. And neither can Coach Driscoll. That's going to be number four on their rim protector in Dorian James. 17 foul. Number four on Dorian James, who's got an 11-point game going, but he's their leading rebounder on the year and their top shot blocker. So shot for the line for the first time tonight. 18 points for him, 9 of 13 from the field. He's got six boards, two assists, and he's a 71% free throw shooter. Dorian James, he's... He's wanting that call, and the reason why he's so frustrated right now is he's still letting the official know what he saw was just the arm coming up at DeMarcus Sharp, but the official letting him know you hit the arm was what the call was. So he was still letting the official have it. And those clad in red right now, they want a tee on Torian James, yeah. but the official over there, he's, he's making sure that He's calling this one right down as he can. Point for Sharp tonight. Tough shot by Smith. Jones stayed right with him. Now Haney trying to draw contact. Step through Lanier, blocked it. Now Smith weaves through traffic down the Florida Miles. The freshman thought about the three. Now he needs some help. He'll get it to NZ. Danger zone for Austin P right now. 64-56, eight minutes to go. Haney plays with four and NZ takes him into the post, leans in, no call. NC his own rebound, gathers, goes up, put it in. And Isaac Haney, he can't really do much there defensively, right? Otherwise, he'd foul out. Just has to put the hands straight up in the air, and you see him right there just do what he possibly can, put the hands up, and unfortunately, the shot goes in around him. 14 for NZ off the bench tonight. Here's Haney's three. It is good. Good shot. That's a bit on life support needed that, and Haney, who's come through big in the second half, knocks down that three-pointer. And a timeout leading by seven. Lipscomb has taken the lead at Allen Arena for the first time since we've been checking that score. The Bisons had a 64-63 lead over UNA as they still have 540 to go in that one. Lipscomb has so many weapons. <laughs> it's just a big part of that. And, you know, North Alabama definitely coming out, I'm sure, had the surprise factor. Been playing really, uh, really tough against them. But Lipscomb's one of those teams, man, you just can't let them stick around. They have so many talented guys that'll just score with ease. What a job Lenny Aikov. I mean, there's so many great uh, Coach of the Year candidates. He loses his preseason Player of the Year candidate, Magnosevic, and he loses Darian Boyd, and his team just keeps on trucking. And if they are able to hang on and win that game, they will host the winner of this game. The Bisons will on Thursday night. Here's Lanier and Sharp. What a matchup between these two tonight. And Lanier gets the best of him on that one. That's just a great take. And you know Lanier, he's so physical. You can watch and He knows DeMarcus Sharp's had his number for most of the night defensively. Just able to get that one to go around Sharp. That is just old school. Put your one against their one. That's what's happening tonight. Between the two best players for these two teams. And Sharp's had the better of it, but... Lanier's team's had the best of it. How about Desi Jones coming to life? The Gulfs need him late. Six points for him as he flips the shot into the paint. And Desi Jones had 22 the first meeting. We need to see him light up here if the Gulfs have a chance to come back in this one. Haney plays with four fouls. Here's a three off the left side. Rimmed out. Rebound controlled by Des White. Now Sharp, as he goes to work, takes some contact, spins, puts it in. So his guards attacking now. DeMarcus Sharp up to 22 now. He was missing that first time around. Who else is going to step up here for Austin P? Leaves down to five. As many as 11 tonight for the Ospreys. Here's Lateris, big size advantage on Jones. Jones want to come and help. Jones doing the best he can. Lateris blows it. 6'6 six, six against 5'10. Five, 5'10 five, gets the win. 
A sharp running start right into Lateris. Oh, man, what a night. Is this guy sending a message tonight or what? They're going to get a quick timeout call here. Coach Driscoll not happy with what he saw over these past few But I think he's getting his point across tonight. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's making sure people know. Crazy enough, Barry, we get that uh, TV timeout. North Alabama looks for the same score right now. North Alabama back up 68-65 there in Nashville. So much at stake in his final few minutes in both of those games. Here's Lanier, gets the step that time on Sharp, scored, and he's fouled. Second foul of the night on DeMarcus. And that time Lanier gets the best of him. It's been all his points in the second half for Chaz Lanier. As Sharp shut him out in the first half, but Lanier has answered back this half. Yeah, Chaz Lanier has been an absolute breath of fresh air for Coach Driscoll because he was wondering why his first team all a Sun guy wasn't attacking, wasn't playing up to who he was in that first half. But second half has absolutely come to life. 13 points now for Chaz Lanier. And he's trying to cling to every bit of this lead. Only taking eight shots tonight. Haney with four fouls. Dorian James is guarding Sharp with four fouls. The only two players in serious trouble. Sharp all the way through to Haney. Now Jones, can he get it going? This one off the mark. Three ball has not been there tonight for Austin P. Three of 13. Gubs have hit four of their last five before that miss. They got it to three. And now the Ospreys content to let Lanier cook. Right back to him. Got switched out on Black at the step. Down the lane, laid it in. Again, the physicality. Chaz Lanier putting the team on his back. Says we want to take one down to Jacksonville. Jumper good from three, Jamonte Black. And a quick timeout. For Austin. As far as foul trouble goes, four fouls on Dorian James, four fouls on Isaac Haney are the only players in serious foul trouble. So the Ospreys picked 11th in the preseason poll. They finished fifth. The Govs picked eighth. They finished fourth. Two really good coaching jobs by these head coaches this year as they meet for the second time and another nail-biter here tonight. Lanier, double team, gets rid of it to James. Seven on the timer, swings it. Driving down the lane with Terrace, another quick double team. Govs trapping everywhere, two on the timer. Stepping back, Smith's got to shoot the three. Air ball! And there it is. A shot clock violation. It was contact right in front of Matthew Driscoll. It's right closed down on Smith, freshman on freshman. But the official was right there, and he says play on. Yeah, and, and again, I, I'm thinking more than anything, that one's going to get called just for the shot clock violation going to get called more than anything because as that was shot at one, it completely aired out. Sharp with 24 tonight on the take, in the paint, put it up. Got it, he's fouled. Marcus Sharp, what a ball game for him tonight. Well, Demarcus Sharp, when they came out of the timeout, he looked at everybody and he said, hey, we got to stay calm. We have to be smart here. We can't do anything foolish. Then he comes back down the other way and he says, hey, I'm going to put the team on my back. We're seeing really good play. Chaz Lanier has done the exact same thing for North Florida in this one. Demarcus Sharp has done it for Austin P. Neither one of these guys want to give up. They're guarding each other, and they're having to make uh, put a lot of this on themselves in this contest. And we're seeing two very talented players, Nason, one-on-one. 27 for Sharp tonight. In his third game back after missing six, the Gums have cut it to two, and this crowd comes to life. They have lifted this team all year, 12 and two on this court, and the crowd has been a major factor. Can they get the guns to the finish line? Lateris right down Broadway, lays it in. That's just Desi Jones not wanting to foul there, which is smart. Doesn't want that and one play to happen. Shot quickly, back at Lanier, no double. Put it up, and it rolled off. Oh, a tough miss for Sharp that time. Did everything but hit the nylon. And a reach-in foul on Jones. That's number two on Desi. That's team foul number eight on the Govs. That's going to send these Ospreys to the line. 
And as a team, pretty good free throw shooting team, 76% on the year. They're eight for 11 tonight. And Lanier is two of three tonight. Number two in the conference at 88%. As he shoots the one one. Now you mentioned his stats coming into this, right? 50, 40, and 90. I mean, you know he's uh, he's not one of those guys that's going to step to the charity stripe in this many. And a tip of the hat to Lanier and Barry James. A Sun Academic All Americans as well. All academic team of the A Sun is Lanier hits them both. So they're doing it on the court and in the classroom. Here's Sharp. Sharp's been doing it on the court all night tonight. Mono a Mono, the two best players have gone at it all evening long. Des White back to Sharp. And there's no help coming. Sharp leans in, tough and Jones tied in one motion in the air to rebound it and put it back up. And he will draw the foul on the interior. On NZ, his second. Check it, they're going to get NZ with three. Two shots coming for Jones. First trip to the line tonight. Seven for Desi. 81% free throw shooter on the year. The two-time A-Sun Newcomer of the Week. He had a 22-point, eight-rebound, eight-assist game against UNF earlier. Hits two Bears free throws because they're all going to be big now. Four-point lead. Ospreys with the ball. Their freshman point guard, Smith, picked up by the veteran, the grand transfer, Jones. Now it's Lanier to Dorian James. James out there with four fouls. Now Sharp and Lanier. That has been the matchup all night. Swing it for Smith. Oh, James almost vacated the area. And he's left wide open. He blew the little baby hook. Gunn's got a big break there. Now Sharp spinning. Lean in. Off the glass. Good. And the clinic continues by DeMarcus Sharp. Two-point game. Here comes the trap. Lanier dribbles out of it. Once it gone to this trap in the half court. Swing it for three, Lateris. Big shot for Nate Lateris. Eight made threes for North Florida. None bigger than Lateris just now. 18 for him. Sharp goes right back to work. A lot of contact as he hits the deck. That's going to be number four on Lanier. It's like DeMarcus Sharp, that left calf muscle. He's grabbing at that, trying to stretch it out real quick. You know, he missed time, like an injury that he had with his hand. Now he's getting up, hobbling over to come shoot some free throws. 29 for him tonight. Three of three at the stripe. He's 13 of 19 from the field. Has just put on a show this evening. Again, his first two games back, he had 10 points, played 30 minutes against Eastern Kentucky. The Gubs that's upset the Colonels. Then he played 26 minutes, had eight points here Friday night, and the Gubs overtime went over Bellarmine. So he has played the heavy minutes tonight that he's accustomed to all year. He leads the conference 36 minutes per game. He rarely comes off the floor this season. Out of Charleston, Missouri. This Gov's team with six seniors that were honored here Friday night. They do not want to see their career come to an end this evening. They want to move on. Now it's going to be this full court pressure trying to take away any opportunity to get this ball up as Desi Jones is going to foul there quickly. Foul number three on Jones. Nineteen foul, so one in one time for the freshman Smith. 65% free throw shooter. 0 for 1 there tonight. Number 
Big free throw for the youngster. Off the mark. The Jobs can tie with a three. As we near the one minute mark, here goes Sharp. In Z, the assignment this time. Sharp just spins and puts it in again. Down to one. Well, here in the backcourt is trapped. Dwight and Jones have him. And they're going to get the foul called. Foul called on the reach in. And you can hear what the fans think about it. Des White just trying to reach in there, right? That was the big thing, trying to get the tie up. Chaz Lanier swinging away, trying to make sure no one can grab the ball. Ends up getting the call there to head to the charity stripe. And again, he's been lights out almost from the free throw line in this one. Four or five as Chaz Lanier gone. None bigger though than these, at least this one that he can try to get the second. And Lanier quiets the crowd. All of his scoring coming in the second half. Got them both, 19 for him tonight. Just a phenomenal second half. Back to three, 47 seconds to go. Jones on the spin blocking foul as he and Smith both hit the deck. And next number two on Jalen Smith. 11 team fouls for two shots. Govs have committed 10, two shots the rest of the way for both teams. 46.3 to play. Jones tonight, two of two at the strike. Eight points for Desi. Season average of 13. Everything big down the stretch with 46.3 to go as Ethan Schmidt's keeping his eye on the game in Nashville. Yeah, Will Pruitt hit a three with about three seconds left to tie the game in North Alabama. K.J. Johnson hit one with two seconds left to take the lead. Back for North Alabama in Nashville. Austin P. they don't have to score up here, but they need to try to get some sort of stop if they want to try to host on Thursday. One point game and the drive and the finish, NZ. Back to three, Jones, stop and go, down the lane, put it up and good, Desi Jones answers right back. And it looks like the Gubs are just unreal. March Mad is just the second day, just all got started <laughs> yesterday. If this is anything like what we can see in the big tournament, we are in for some fun this month. Nothing decided here yet. 84-83, 29.9 to go to the Ospreys by one. They've got to come the length of the floor against all-out Austin P. Pressure. The Terrace will run the floor, and he'll get it back to Lanier. Oh, he almost hit that line. and will get the timeout, getting very close to the five-second call. He got those toes all the way up to that end line. And so we'll do it all again. That was very close to a turnover. Again, UNF. Just that one time out, if they can't get it in, they still have one more to burn. Gov's coming with all out pressure. And Lanier set the inbound. They tried two men out of bounds a moment ago, Lateris to Lanier, and the Govs didn't bite on it. Right back to Chaz, the outstanding free throw shooter, now to NZ. And White's gonna come up and give the foul. Number two on Des White, and NZ who's had a big ball game. We'll go to the free throw line. He's three of four from there tonight, and he's 81% on the year. Well, it's very simple. The team with the lead, if they make free throws, they get out of here with a win. They miss anything, they open the door. And NZ, who's had a big time game off the bench tonight. 16 points. He gets two, and the first one is good. Calmly hits the balls. Huge shots there. Back to three-point lead. Gubbs in a hurry. Jones going to take it right to the rim. They're not going to foul it, and Desi lays it in. Now the Gubbs will come with their pressure again. Trapped is Lanier, and he will take the final Osprey timeout. It's 0 for 2, the point guard. 
At 65%, he would be the guy to foul if the ball comes into him. James to trigger it in. He will get it to Lanier. Lanier's trapped. That one bounce again. Back to James. Swing it for Lateris. And Black will give it. So Nate Lateris, 77% on the seasons. One of one from there tonight. He almost thought that Austin P would try to foul Dorian James, who hadn't even attempted a free throw yet in this game. And instead, they're going to get out to Lateris, who's one for one and has been perfect from three as well. Another 18-point game for Lateris. He had 18 against the Govs in the earlier meeting. He will shoot two. And his team leading by one. Out of Sewell, Nebraska. Rend it out. If he misses the next one, Austin P will have to get down the floor as quick as possible. They only have 10 seconds here. No timeouts to the team. Here's number two for the Terrace. Got it. They bring Barry in now for the defense, take out the young freshman. Two-point game, 10.1. No timeouts. Austin P's got to go the length of the floor. It'll be Haney, Sharp, Jones, White, and Black. Here's Sharp. Up the floor he goes. Five seconds. Drives it right to the rim. Gets it back to Haney. Haney into the paint, lays it up, lays it in with 2.2. Isaac Haney's tied the ball game. Into Lanier. Lanier throws one the length of the floor. Hits the backboard, and oh, yes. What else would you expect? All alone, and you saw him. I mean, he, it, it looks like one of the, a grade schooler trying to throw the ball in <laughs> just to try to get it to go. Oh, that was a tough shot for Ice Haney, as he's called as he was wide open. He just had to get that thing over the lip, and he got it in. Lanier's three-quarter court heave hit the backboard, but to no avail. Here we go in the OT. Four fouls on Haney. There are four fouls on Desi Jones for the Govs. Four fouls on Lanier, four on Dorian James for the Osprey. Shot clock is at five in this five-minute overtime. Jumper is good. Oh, wow. Big time three for James. Dorian James is a perfect two for two now from three. He was falling away on that one. Sharp against Lanier. That's been the battle all night. DeMarcus missed it. It's tipped out. And let's see. Looks like it's Austin P possession here. Dubs are going to keep it. I got blocked out that far corner. Now it is North Florida. You have said Austin P popped it out. So this is the fourth overtime now play between these two teams in a sun play. And Smith, the point man, got the step on Jaws, but Desi trailing the play. Oh, he saved it right back in to James, picked it off, tried to get it to Black. Here's NZ. Missed it. Lateris comes in on that weak side rebound. It's tipped away from him. It'll stay with the Ospreys. As again, they've jumped out to that three-point lead. It seems like they have led all night long. The Govs have just paddled uphill. Govs had a brief lead of three points at 20 to 17, way back in the first half. Ospreys have not been able to run away and hide. They've had a couple of double-digit leads in their biggest of the night, 11 points. And Manuel's going to come in for Jones. Now, Desi's got four, so we might see some of the offensive, defensive substitutions here in this OT. Smith to get it in, lobs it in traffic. Des White almost with the header there to knock that ball free. NZ will step up to the three-point line, missed it. Ooh, that would have been a big three for NZ. Here's Sharp on the crossover. Back out for Black. Jamonte's been quiet tonight, has uh, three three-pointers, but his come at just the perfect time. Haney goes to work! Three-point play for Ice Haney! The pride of West Plains, Missouri. Finished his career as a Kickapoo Chief. Steps up. Has a chance here to tie it. And boy, what a career he's had, right? Was over at Missouri State. Coach Gip on that bench over there, one of the assistants, follows him down to Northwestern State, now follows him to Austin P. And Isaac Haney, I mean, you talk about a story for him. 
You mentioned it early on. Western Kentucky game, you were there, you watched yep. him. First minute, rolls his ankle. And you were like, this guy may not play again this season. And <laughs> he taped it up and said, I'll be good. And told us he would be good. And sure enough, he's come to play the rest of this season. That was a huge foul call on Lanier, who has fouled out with 19 points. The first player to exit is Lanier. Deadlocked at 93, 15 to go in overtime number one. The bench has stepped up all night as James. Yeah, I didn't think for a moment Jason Baker was going to call it, but on the discard, it was late, but it was the call, and that'll be number five on Dorian James. And Dorian James is gone now. That's going to be the night for him as well. So you lost two of your top players. And Dorian James, he's not wanting to exit. He's trying to still talk to the official. Coach Driscoll giving the stare down to the officials as well. That's two big losses there for North Florida. That's 19 points for Lanier and 14 for James as they exit. They're their top two scorers on the season. As Haney, he goes to work, just powers it up. It wouldn't go. Rebound controlled by the Ospreys. Well, Haney just sticks his nose right in there in traffic. I don't know how he gets it. The shot off most of the time. Let's go P the chant. Three is up. Off the mark, rebounded by Sharp, went up over two Ospreys and ripped it down. And this is where Austin P gets really good, right? They can slow down this ball. They don't have to go and score. Oh, Smith picks the pocket of Sharp. The freshman goes in and Sharp blocks it. Another thing's up on the play, Agent Zero with the eraser. And he bangs in, and they're going to get the blocking foul. Not set up was Oscar Berry. And that is foul number two on Barry and Coach Driscoll continues his discussion with the officiating crew. Seems like nothing's going his way here in overtime. Now, Coach Driscoll, and again, the only thing I can think of is, as we're going to see it, Barry try to step over and gets called for it there. He thought he was set, but he's stepping into it. And that's where that call is going to come against him. He was never set. 33 tonight for Sharp. As he'll get two. And his first miss at the stripe tonight. Well, 33 points for DeMarcus Sharp. And, you know, you got to give him one miss at the charity stripe, right? He has done it all tonight. Two big misses. As the momentum has swung Austin P's way, but as you look at that board, it's still 90 all. Barry would tell you ball doesn't lie. That's what he's going to say. Reach in foul on Emmanuel. That's his first. And they are content to send the uh, the young freshman point guard back to the free throw line. He's 0-2 from there tonight. Smith with nine points. Get everything, two free throws. He'll get the lift and it'll bounce over for him. That's going to feel good for him, right? That one was uh, walking up there 0 for 2. He'd been one of those guys that you'd probably say, make him make him earn it, and he is going to do that on this trip. Two big ones for the freshman. He's taken over for Amitri Moss from here in Clarksville. He's out with a knee injury, and Smith, all he did was make the all a Sun freshman team. Osprey's again back in front, despite their two key players fouling out. The Guns have not been able to take control in overtime. Sharp just missed two free throws. He goes against the freshman, the veteran, against the youngster, and the youngster got the block. One of the few times tonight, Sharp's had a player smaller than him, and he comes back and puts it in. Great defense there by Smith. you got to give him all the credit in the world. He had one block earlier, and he thought he had an easy lay-in. He just goes up against one of the better players in the A-Sun, and... Made him have to fight for his own miss and then go back up with it. Now, where do you go for your offense? NC's had a big game with Terrace. NC on the clear out against Black. The step through, Jamonte fouled him. And it'll be number two on Black and NC to the free throw line. Awesome 
Jamonte Black's just gonna get called. Uh, he just brings that arm down and gets part of the hand there of NZ. He's five of six tonight from the stripe, 81% on the year. And a huge ball game off the bench for him. 18 points and a big miss. And what he's done so well when he comes to the free throw line is he gets that ball and he doesn't allow the crowd to get into it. That last time, though, he took his time to shoot. That time you can see him. He kind of got back into his motion for that one, but it was a rare miss because he actually took a breath and tried to knock it down. That's just not part of his game. Splitsy pair, and the Ospreys back in front by one. Sharp again. Smith gets the assignment. Baptism under fire for the freshman. The Sharp just had an incredible game. Jones runs off the three-point line right into the paint. There's a blocking foul. Chance of a three-point play for Desi Jones. And Desi Jones goes in. You can watch him. He goes straight up. And you can see, I know what they're saying is that Smith was try, had his feet set. He wasn't in that circle, but it's one of those things where he's just giving way, right? He's, he's falling away as... Desi Jones is trying to go into that contact. And again, that's a veteran play by Desi Jones, the guy from Quinnipiac, honored on the last game on Friday. He comes out here, he knows he can get a little bit of contact and then earns it from the free throw line there. 17 for him, 15 in the second half. Jobs with a two-point advantage. 45 seconds to play and overtime number one. NZ, ball stripped away. Here's a steal. Sharp off the floor. Gets it over to Jones. Jones gathers. Goes up, put it in. Oh my, Desi Jones. Jumps by four. 30 seconds to play. Here's with Terrace. He goes right to the cup and lays it in. And a quick timeout. Each team picked up a timeout in the overtime and Matthew Bristol will use it here. stripe in this game. White to inbound, here comes pressure, and Jones is fouled by Smith. That's number four on Jalen. And Desi Jones will calmly walk to the other end to shoot these free throws. He has come to life here late in the game and in overtime. Five of five at the strike tonight, 19 points, and again, 17 of those coming in the second half and in the overtime session. Try to keep this at a two-possession game if he can hit both of them. 26.5 to go. What's at stake? The winner will host Thursday night. North Alabama will come to either Clarksville or Jacksonville as there have been upsets galore tonight in the A-Sun. So the winner will get a home game Thursday night against UNA. And Jones, the veteran, Calmly nails them both. Four point game. Jumper from three to Barry. He hits a three. Massive three for the Aussie. That sharp is foul as Barry commits foul number three. Boy, this, this just never ends between these two. Big shot after big shot. Ten made threes now for North Florida. It was one of those things that I talked about with this team. Having to dig down deep, do better this time from three if you were going to have a chance in this game. And Oscar Berry, man, the trailer three just knocks it down, brings it back to a one-point game. Sharp five of 70, missed two a moment ago. Hey, milestone moment, first 100-point game in the in the new, That's the new right. building. Gubs had scored 98 in a game, but they hit the century mark. And Sharp hits them both. The hit three by Barry makes this a one possession game. 15 seconds to go. 101 98. Lateris can knock down a three. So can NZ. Haney with him. Eight on the timer. He's picked up his dribble. He's in trouble. Miles got to get rid of it. Four seconds to go. Ball by three. Jones gets a steal. Desi Jones gets a steal. Unbelievable finish. The Bulls get the defensive stop. They survive. 